you see a huge variety of of animals moving to and from these waterholes. Ostriches pepper the, the open grassland and very often huge flocks of youngsters tag along behind them. They rely on the openness for their protection and move freely, keeping a keen eye for predators and Really, it's the space that protects them. A lot of the elephants move out from the water holes and cross the marsh. It is summer and the rain is starting to come and a lot of the bulls quite enjoy gliding across this marsh and picking out creepers that have grown from the little bit of rain that has fallen. It's just an amazing landscape to see animals like elephants on, so flat and so open. Big storm clouds are around and the rains are still coming. Very little has fallen yet. The storms moving around on the horizon, continually circling Savuti, threatening the imminent rain. slopes, the troop of macaques wait for the sun to warm and begin their day. I'm surprised to see this macaque activity at this altitude. We're at about 3,000 meters above sea level and the maximum altitude range for these creatures is purported to be about 2,000. But here they are, probably the most well-adapted primate species in Asia, apart from human beings. I start to think and see how they have adapted to this barren and difficult environment and altitude. I see that they feed largely on leftovers and waste from passing travelers. This is no doubt the alpha male of the troop up on the top ledge. An adolescent being groomed by his mother, comfortable, but alert always. The lines of sight and levels of alertness between these creatures are critical. The females and young seem to be constantly alert to the movement and whims of the male population. And there's an obvious aggression from the males. And I would surmise that this would have to do with the continuous shortage of food, which would naturally bring about more competitiveness and certainly more conflict within the troop. Yeah. 
so the mothers tend to keep their babies as far away as possible from the big males. And of course any inappropriate blood lineage would also attract more aggression from the resident alpha males. And then the mist rises up from the valley. And far down below I see the fingers of spewed out volcanic rock on the slopes of the new volcano which has emerged in the center of this enormous crater which some 14,000 years ago gave explosive birth to this island of Lombok. Such dynamics, such beautiful dynamics in this environment. And here we sit up 3,000 meters high on a mountain ledge with a troop of macaques watching as the clouds roll in and make our world disappear. We spotted these incredible larvae. They were on the young Cambritum trees and Guari trees and um, it was still quite cold in the morning and uh, they weren't moving much at first. But as the day warmed up a bit, they started feeding. These worms are from the same family as the Mapani worm and the larvae are the larvae of the emperor moth. In Zulu, they're called in Trimbe, and uh, like the Mpani worms, they're eaten as a, a delicacy amongst the locals. When looking closer at the head, it was quite fascinating how it moved in and out of its sheath uh, while feeding on, on these leaves. We really got a good look at the mandibles as they clasped and chewed through the leaves at this incredible rate. These larvae were stripping every single leaf off these uh, small combretum trees. 